Ladies and gentlemen, this is Oakland City Attorney John Russo. Hey, Zen. Hey, John. Happy, uh, Merry Christmas, first of all. But yeah, Merry yeah. Christmas to you. Happy and holidays. Yeah, definitely. Hey, um, tell my viewers about, first of all, how things are going in this recession for your office. I know you just put out your annual report, and uh, talk about that with me. Very challenging for the office right now. Um, we are under a great deal of budgetary pressure. We've lost seven attorney positions in the past uh, 18 months. We are expecting to be asked to cut another million dollars or so from our budget uh, in the next budget cycle. That would um, strike yet another four lawyers, so that would be 11 lawyers lost out of about 40. Um, now you're starting to look really at getting at the, the heart of the, of the function as opposed to, you know, people, people say a lot of things about, you know, you can cut fat, and, and the reality is department heads always say they can't take any cuts, but you know, there's ways everybody works a little harder. You might forgo a couple of projects here and there that you were going to work on. There's ways to get through. When you start talking about losing 11 professionals out of 40, um, they're really, they're just major things that are just not going to get done in that budget environment. 20% of your staff. It's actually 25%. Excuse me, 25%. What are you yeah, saying? It's, it's 25% of the staff. It's, it, and, and we're not alone. But, but, you know, Zen, nobody is going to come, as I've said many times before, no one's going to come to a budget hearing and say, don't worry about the cops, don't worry about the libraries, don't worry about the parks, save the lawyers. <laughs> no, one, no one says that. Um, and I don't except the lawyers. Well, except the lawyers, except for this lawyer, because you know, I understand why people feel that way. The problem, of course, is the city has to respond to lawsuits, has to process the claims. I can't go to the courts and say, I'm so sorry, due to budget cuts, we won't be answering this complaint and we won't be in this lawsuit, we won't be paying any judgment demanded by the plaintiff. So that means more work for the people you have or outsourcing? Uh, it what? means outsourcing, which often is more expensive than having people here. So it's kind of counterproductive and that's the argument I've tried to make over the years to the city council that at a certain point the work has to be done um, and, and the work the uh, the work of this office in the community the neighborhood law corps and the community prosecution programs are absolutely critical to public safety and to the quality of life of our neighborhoods so uh, or the quality of life in our neighborhoods and so uh, we're going to do the best we can I understand why you know the council is in such a difficult position, we'll do the best we can. I'm, I'm very sympathetic to how difficult budget times are right now. So I don't say this by way of complaint, sure. I say this more just by way of you ask, what are we facing? Yeah, that's right, yeah. That's what we're facing. It almost begs the question, I mean, if you have less money per staff member, does that mean you have less money to spend time on a case and therefore more likely to just settle as opposed to fight? That's absolutely comes into the it comes into the mix I mean when you make a decision to settle and keeping in mind that the vast majority of cases not just here at City Hall just right. civil cases settle the, the percentage is in the high it's in the mid 90s I almost said the high 90s but it's not it's, it's something like 94 95 96 percent hard to follow because some cases settle before they're even filed but the general thinking is it's in the mid 90s um, but whether you settle or fight, whether you take those extra depositions, that would put you in a better position to force a settlement. Whether you hire that uh, accident reconstruction specialist or not, all of those micro decisions across the several hundred cases a year that we handle, um, all of those decisions are impacted by the budget. And so, you know, you might save a penny here and a penny there and then lose a dollar here and a dollar there. And there's no formula I can give you. It's an art. It's not a science. It's something that, you know, if you're an attorney over the years, uh, if you've been at it as long as I have, you start to know where money is well spent and where you're just right. you you know, feel churning and wasting money. Yeah. You don't yeah. want to waste money. You don't want to be the, be the kind of attorney, especially not on the taxpayer's dime, that says, we're going to do everything. Mm -hmm. Because uh, that'll just bankrupt the city if we were to do everything. Yeah, I'm curious. This recent settlement with the police mm -hmm. would that have not have been a, been a settlement if the city had more money to fight its claim? No, I, that's a different situation. What happened there is two two matters came into play. One was 
just on the legal, um, we lost a, a motion. Mm -hmm. um, the, we lost a number of motions. We lost a motion, though, that was very important, whereby the court held as a matter of, it doesn't go to a jury, it's not a question of fact, as a matter of law, the city had miscalculated overtime. Hmm. Now, obviously, hmm. that's nothing my office has anything to do with. Right. We don't run payroll. The uh, city has had a lot of trouble with payroll over the past 10 years. But once the court held, as a matter of law, we had violated federal uh, labor law standards in the calculation of overtime, that meant the party plaintiffs were guaranteed to get their attorney's fees for the case. <laughs> Keep in mind that in any lawsuit that has to do with uh, these type of work condition issues, civil rights lawsuits, and disability lawsuits, the plaintiffs can get their attorney's fees if they prevail, but the agency that's being sued, in this case, the taxpayers of Oakland, we don't get our attorney's fees if we win. So it's an yeah. unlevel playing field. Right. And it really compels us towards settlement in cases that a private party might take their chance. Because of the attorney's fees. Because of attorney's fees. Recover, and, it, right. and in this case, if you look at this case, um, one and three quarter million dollars of the settlement over time, mm -hmm, paying mm -hmm. it over years, is in attorney's fees. The rest of it is a, a, a bank of um, vacation hours for each of the officers, each of the 500 or so officers. They each get a bank of 130 vacation hours to make up for the overtime issues. Um, I don't, didn't like that case very much. I wrote about that case. Mm -hmm. I did an op-ed on it. But the realities are that once we lost that motion, it changed the dynamic and impelled us towards settlement. The second piece is that lawsuit was filed under the former police officers uh, association leadership. There's been new leadership there. They've been much more cooperative with the city mm -hmm. in a number of areas, mm -hmm. and I think it was important to get this case off of the table. Speaking of payroll and the city's deep budget problems and the, the economic problems, and I still think we're in a recession, what, let me ask it another way, I'll just be blunt, is it possible that we're gonna see more difficult lawsuits just because of the situation we're in? You know. It, it, people not getting enough money, being furloughed, I mean, as we move into next year, just as, a, as if you can put a crystal ball? I or don't know the answer to that mm -hmm. yet. Um, we actually have seen a decrease in personnel litigation being incepted in the past year or so. I attribute that to new uh, administrative leadership in the city, uh, at personnel, at the... Um, the uh, Equal Opportunity Program. Mm -hmm. I think the folks who are there now are working much more cooperatively with the city attorney's office to avoid problems on the front end rather than bringing us into the mix after decisions have been made without our consultation and putting the city in a bad record uh, in terms of the cases. So we've seen fewer cases incepting. Yeah. Um, and. Yes, whenever you end up with people being laid off, uh, it's almost an invitation for a more litigation. But we haven't seen that yet. That's good. Yeah, it that's is really good, good news. And Speaking I think, of again, which, I think that's a testament to yeah. the administrative leadership. Since we're coming to a year to land, what's the best thing that's happened in your office this year, and what's the worst? Uh, best thing that's happened in the office this year, I think, was uh, putting the banks on notice and winning the um, winning the um, the um, case and winning a settlement against some of the banks and real estate brokers for illegally evicting families right, right. Uh, who were living in foreclosed properties, mm -hmm. tenants in foreclosed properties being thrown out by banks who were foreclosing on landlords who had taken off and not paid their mortgage. Uh, I think that was a really good case. I like that case a lot. Um, this, the, the worst thing that happened, I think, was having to lay off, uh, lay off attorneys, people who were good, solid attorneys with years and years of experience, and having to lay them off uh, was very painful, and I didn't like doing it. Uh, front page of the Tribune today has San Francisco's, your counterpart, uh, my Facebook friend, Dennis Ferreira. There's his letter. There's the letter. Right on my desk. Right on there. Yep. Your thoughts. Um, 
I, you know, I, I spoke with Dennis today and I told him I thought it was an interesting theory. Um, I can see where his concerns are. Um, I understand it. I don't think any of us really understand the. Con I mean, any of us. I shouldn't speak for Dennis. I think. Well, Dennis do me a favor for my viewers. Like, yeah. give a, a, a short synopsis for somebody that might be in Bangladesh watching this, like, which is possible. Well, the Oakland days have stated that they want to leave Oakland and move to San Jose, um, and Oakland has made several overtures over the years to the A's to remain here in Oakland. Those have largely been ignored. Uh, a sale that we attempted to broker um, back in 1999 uh, was turned down by Major League Baseball for no reason given at all. Um, something that you never see Major League Baseball do, just turn down an ownership change. Um, very, very clear that this has been brewing for a while. Um, we here in Oakland have recently made some new proposals to the A's. Uh, we have not received any response to those, as far as I know. The three land uh, to the new three to the three new land sites. Although one of them is an old land site, right. actually, it's Howard Terminal. Howard Terminal. Um, and uh, what this is about, this letter is, this is the city attorney of San Francisco uh, writing to Major League Baseball and saying, "Excuse me, but the San."